the beginning of most Bibles, a little contents at the beginning, but it's near the book of Revelation if you start thumbing through there, and it's uh, pretty close uh, to getting to Hebrews. Hebrews is one of the larger books as you're going toward the book of Revelation, so if you pass Hebrews, you done passed up 1 Thessalonians, you need to back up a few pages. And once you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, this is a, a really ought to be a favorite chapter of, of many Christians uh, because of the wonderful things that took place at Thessalonica when the Apostle Paul preached there. Uh, I'm giving you some time to get it. If you've got 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, would you stand with me please in reverence for the reading of the Word of God? And you follow along silently while I read aloud in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. What a blessing to have the Bible. Amen. As O'Neill got a Bible for our son-in-law who requested one, got him a Scofield, didn't you? No, we got him a large print. Okay, got her a Scofield. Got a Bible for my daughter who was one of us. I think they may have gotten them misplaced in their stuff that's still packed up. They got a lot of stuff still packed up. But any, and he asked me to engrave his Bible, so I got out my, my chisel and well, no, we, we inscribed the Bible and signed the, signed the Bible. Pray that the Lord will bless the Word of God that has been given out. Pray the Lord bless the Word of God that's going to be given out here tonight. First Thessalonians 1 1 says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father. And in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren to love, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord. <coughs> Notice there that once again, uh, it's a shocking thing for some people to find that the Bible actually teaches is that you ought to follow men who are following the Lord. Mm -hmm. said so you became followers of us and of the Lord. And you follow people as they follow the Lord. If somebody's following the Lord and they deviate some way, don't follow them the way they deviate, okay? Having received the word, much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Now, this is the example they said. What the example was is they uh, were not ashamed. They started telling people how to be saved. And if you want to set a good example for other Christians, go on soul winning visitation this Saturday from 10 till noon. And if you want to be a good example as a church to other people, then we ought to have a good participation as we go out trying to reach people with the gospel. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God would have spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So that's part of the way that they were examples as well, and they served God, they turned away from their idols, served God, and to wait for His Son from heaven. Then He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. That's another good example. He has looked for the Lord. Our text verse will be verse 7. Verse 7 says, So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. May we pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for these who gathered on a midweek service. Thank you for those who have gotten so used to being here every time that the doors are open that they can just come on Wednesday night uh, by reflex without having so much uh, discussion in their own hearts about whether or not they're going to come to church on Wednesday night, but they just come on anyway. Lord, bless them for their desire to be here this evening. May the Holy Spirit stir us up to be what you'd have us to be. 
I pray if there's anyone here in this service who is not truly saved, who could not say beyond any shadow of a doubt that if they were to die, they'd go to heaven. I pray that this would be the day that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. May they trust Him, believe on Him unto life eternal, and bless your children is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Would you be seated, please? Now, in verse 1 of this chapter, it's pretty easy to see who this chapter was addressed to. It was addressed uh, to the church of Thessalonica. Now, these people at Thessalonica were the Apostle Paul's converts. And he said in our text verse, verse 7, that these converts of his were an example to believers everywhere. Now, if they were an example uh, to all that believe, and of course he's talking about uh, areas at that time nearby, uh, if they were examples to them, they probably should have you and me pay attention to their example uh, today. Now, I won't mention some things about them, but what I want to emphasize really is that God wants this church to be an example to other people. Amen. That's why I'm concerned about what goes on here as a pastor, is uh, other people find out what we're doing. Yep. I don't know if you have noticed or not, but we've got somebody from the FBI that's filming everything that you do. <laughs> that's right. She's a fundamental Baptist investigator. <laughs> but uh, that goes on. That goes on YouTube. It goes on our church um, YouTube page. It goes on the Facebook, the church Facebook page, and uh, and so I. I think it's wonderful that we've got a group of men on Sunday night that stand up here on a Sunday night in shirts and ties singing good, old, solid hymns. I'm not talking about uh, the country western hymns that your grandma sang that you think is old-fashioned because grandma is old. Um, but I'm talking about the solid hymns of, of the faith. And you folks that uh, sit in the choir up here, I, you need to behave yourself while uh, while we're getting up here and doing these specials because you need to be an example to people who are going to watch. And people will. They're hungry and they'll watch. And the Thessalonians were examples to everybody. Now, if you want to know what kind of a church that a Glenwood Baptist Church should be and what kind of church we should be following the example, uh, we should not be following the example of the Corinthian church as described in 1 Corinthians, okay? Uh, if we're going to follow the example at all, we should follow the example as described in 2 Corinthians, where Paul basically said, you did good in that you listened to what I said. And you took heed, you repented, you got right. If you want to, want to know what a real church should do, you could learn something about it from studying the a church at Thessalonica. Some people think that what a church function is is to just take care of people in foreign lands. You see these, uh, and I'm talking about missions, I'm talking about some people think that the church uh, is, is here for the purpose of sending lives to those starving children over in India or wherever. And a lot of people, they think of the church as just a charitable organization that takes care of poor folk. Folks, uh, every Christian ought to be concerned about poor folk. Mm -hmm. okay? But the church's commission has absolutely nothing to do yeah. with meeting the physical needs of the people around us. Yeah. That is not our mission. Mm -hmm. You ought to have a compassion for people. All of you ought to have a compassion for people. Uh, including the preacher, right on down, we ought to have a compassion for people who are poor, orphans, children, uh, hungry, but people are not clothed, and all of that. We all ought to. But our mission is about meeting the spiritual needs of people, and our goals ought to be more about spiritual goals. In other words, 
Uh, let's pray for our missionaries before we get to praying so much about a paid parking lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord may provide someday where we'll have a paid parking lot. But I'm more concerned about reaching souls for, for Christ out in foreign lands than I'm about you and me having a paid parking lot. Mm -hmm. Not against the steeple. Not against stained glass windows. Not against uh, replacing the carpet when that needs to be done. It ought to be done. Mm -hmm. When the padded pews are so frayed that I'm afraid somebody's going to fall through them, uh, then, uh, then we need to do it. But that should not be our thoughts of, wow, God is moving at Glenwood Baptist Church. Did you hear what they've done? They put a ping pong table in the fellowship hall. <laughs> No, let me tell you some good news. Sunday, we had a man and a woman and four children come to our church for the very first time. They came because two, two of our ladies on soul and visitation on Saturday went to their door, never having met them, knocked on their door. They finally came. They came and what they knew was Catholicism. They did not know the gospel. They did not know how to be saved. They knew some things about God and the Bible, but they did not know how to be saved. And on the first verse of invitation, they come out of this, their pew Amen. and headed down this aisle Amen. wanting to be saved. Ms. O'Neill got to deal with them back there, and the man was already saved, but his wife got saved. I don't know what's going to come of that, but I believe in glory. Amen. Now my wife and I were happy to do that ping pong table. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed going and did it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. when, but I don't think in eternity probably there's going to be much mention made yeah. about a ping pong table. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, uh, one of the things I'd like to see someday is our, our men's room especially. I don't know what the ladies' room looks like. I thought that like to play. I don't go in the ladies' room. I don't go in the nursery area. But I've been in the men's room. It, it could do some work. And uh, it'd be great, I think, someday if we get somebody to figure out how to make that work. You know, you can go in that stall and, and actually have room to turn around. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, 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 and I will count it as a victory when we, when we do anything around here. If, if, uh, if, somebody, if somebody donates us a brand new baby grand, Piano? Yeah. I said, praise God, that's one. Yeah. But I'm not sure in eternity how much that we're going to hear about that. That's right. Right. But when we hear about somebody getting saved, mm -hmm. I think that's going to call for rejoicing in heaven yeah. a long, 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 long time. Yeah. Yes. So yes. I want you to think with me about that, that kind of thing. But a, ch a church, I, I, believe in, I believe in having things that you can uh, to glorify God and get the work done. But you listen to me. A church can actually exist without owning its own property. Mm -hmm. A church can actually be doing the work of God without owning their own building. Right. A church can glorify the Lord mm -hmm. without a steeple, yeah. without a stained glass window, Right. Without a window for that man. That's right. That's right. Amen. Without a carpet. Come on, some of you folks have been in the church where the Holy Ghost dealt with people and you were sitting on what do they call them? Uh, what do they call those benches? Mm -hmm. Slap benches. I think we call them slap benches. Mm -hmm. Slap meant that they had room between the slaps. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, for you to stick out. Or fall through if he was a little kid. But in some of those places, and in some of those places, they had a wood burning stove mm -hmm. in one part of the of the building to keep the whole building warm. That's right. and I'm saying that while all these things that the Lord allows churches to have pianos, organs, a carpet, upholstery, and furniture, and all that thing, that's all wonderful. But does that really make it? A real church. I want to give you some thoughts tonight and title the message, 
what a church should do. What a church should do. Now, uh, here lately I've joked a little bit about it because I've been helping Brother Steve a little bit. Brother Steve does so much work around our facilities, yeah. and it needs to be done. If you don't, it'll fall apart. If you don't do it at your house, it'll fall apart. Things need to be done to be kept up. And, and I've joked about it because I've been up here swapping some of these ceiling tiles out. And, uh, and so far, I haven't fallen off, thank Amen. the Lord. Amen. But here's what we really need to be doing. Amen. And what we really need to be doing, number one, a church should endeavor, whatever it does, with confidence in the Lord. I want you to notice in verse 3, if you still have your Bibles there, I'm going to give you the points tonight from right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 about this church. Notice in chapter 1, verse 3, I want you to look at the words, work of faith. It says in verse 3, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. A church ought to endeavor to do what it does with confidence in God. And that means that we trust God, and that means we ask God. A lot of churches have committees, a lot of churches have budgets, a lot of churches have fundraising campaigns, and there's a lot of churches that hire outside businesses to try to raise money to manage the money for the local church. Back in the old days, when churches needed things, they gave, they worked, they cooperated, but they prayed. They prayed. Yeah. Hey, folks, if we need something, let's give, yeah. let's sacrifice, yeah. let's cooperate, let's do what we can with our own hands. A lot of churches have been helped put together by the physical effort of the congregation. Sure. But let's pray. Amen. Anybody remember praying? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Let's pray that God will supply. Pray that God will work. These people had a work of faith. That means they live by the Bible. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you've got a church that's living by faith, you've got a church that reads the Bible. Amen. It's one of the reasons why I encourage you to read your Bible every day. It will build faith in you. They look toward heaven. One eye down the Bible, one eye looking up toward heaven. We may look cockeyed, but, but we're on target. Amen. Because we're looking to the Lord and His Word. Number two, I want you to notice the other uh, gifts there in uh, in verse three, and I want to say that a church should exhibit charity, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. Christian love in the Bible is called charity. The Thessalonians had charity. Their labor was a labor of love. Not just because of duty, even though I believe in duty. Not just because it, it had to be done, because there's some things need to be done. But they loved the Lord. Amen. They loved His work. They loved His will. They loved His word. They loved one another. They loved lost souls. Charity is not just bestowing goods to help people. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 says you can uh, uh, give all your goods to sell the poor or to give to the poor and not have charity. But charity is a love that gives. It's possible to give without loving. A lot of people will give money and send money to things that they see on TV that touches their heart, feed these poor little babies, uh, these little bellies of these swollen bellies of these children overseas. They won't, and these people go to churches and they're so interested, and they won't go on visitation one time to try to tell somebody right here about how to be saved. Give them the gospel and give them gospel training. But if we have charity, charity will supply the needs of our church. Our charity will solidify the fellowship of our church. The Bible says, and above all, I put on charity, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. And folks, if you and I can love God, then we can love another, one another like we should, we won't have 
problems with getting along in our church. That's right. When we have problems with people getting along in our church is when you love you. When I love me, and folks, that's pretty easy for me to do because I think I'm wonderful. <laughs> well, the fact is, most of us like ourselves pretty well because we're really concerned more so than we are about one another. If we got a little ache, we're going to take care of it. You got a little ache, I hope you get better. I'm praying for you, brother. And then we may not think about it another time. That's right. After we've heard about it, we may not think about it till next week. Boy, we think about our aches and pains, don't we? Yep. But if we love one another like we should, charity cover a multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. If if this woman does me wrong, she probably will. <laughs> if this woman does me wrong, she probably will. You folks are are out of your board if you could think I'm going to insult her right now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but these other two I don't have to go home with. <laughs> but if we do one another wrong, yeah. by omission, oh. by thoughtlessness, right. by selfishness. I'm not talking about going and having a conspiracy plot trying to destroy one another. I'm just saying that because that we're not angels, we're not perfect yet, we're liable to mess up and not treat each other exactly like we should. Right. Yeah. And if you ever get slighted, and you will, if you ever get slighted, if you have fervent charity in your heart, yeah. it'll cover that sin. Right. Charity should cover the multitude of sin. Yeah. I've often said to new members, I said, now look, you may be liking it now, but there's going to come times where you're going to need to put up with me. Mm -hmm. And what I want to let you know don't you laugh so much down here on the second row. I can deal with you. <laughs> and what I want you to know is, if you'll put up with me, I want you to know I'll put up with you. Amen. If you'll put up with my preaching, I'll put up with your sorry living. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't like that message. Well, there's a lot of things about you I don't like. Yeah. But I love you. I do. I love you. And, and I want you to be able to grow in the Lord and benefit every time you go to the church. A church ought to exhibit a charity. Number three, a church ought to endure conflicts. In 1 Thessalonians 1 6, that we read, it said, You became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. I don't like conflicts. Uh, I have I have taken martial arts, I have worked out, I have bought all kinds of guns. But I would rather not use anything. I guess anybody. Rip. Um, I don't want to fuss with anybody. Yeah. I'd rather just get away from it if there's going to be fuss. Yeah. We ever have a business meeting, you folks start fussing, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. Amen. You say, well, where's the pastor at? He left. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, not going to get involved in that because I'm just going to fuss. Amen. I don't want to fuss with my wife. Yeah. If, I, if, I, if she fusses with me, I'm going home. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> I'll go to church. Yeah. <laughs> a church is going to have uh, conflicts. It's going to have problems. And beloved, some of them are going to be from within. But we need to endure them. Outlast the conflicts. Outlive the conflicts. And some of them are going to come with, from without. There will be people in government. There will be people in religion. There will be people in the neighborhood who just... Get it in for you. Any of y'all ever had any neighbors that just seemed like they just decided that you were the enemy? Yeah. You don't feel like you did it? That can happen to a church. Mm -hmm. It can happen to a church where people decide that church don't need to be here. Yeah. I remember one time we bought some property in Albany, Georgia, and this, we moved the church out on it and in trying to get all our permits. Anybody ever dealt with all the bureaucrats about having to get permits and stuff? Yeah. To put up a building or put up a church or whatever. Oh my! And and we had this one hearing there for the planning commissioners, and and there was one lady who stood up, and she was not just Mrs. So and so and so. She was Doctor So and so. Yeah. What it was, she was a she was a professor at one of the schools or something like that. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. And uh, and she said, "We haven't thought this thing out. They allow this." We allow this church in here. It's going to be a traffic problem. 
All I'm down this road. And I was thinking, God have mercy. I hope that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> I wish to God in these days that we'd have a traffic problem. Get, yeah. You know, getting people in and out of church and back home. And she said, and besides that, she said, why do they have to have all these cows? Cows. C-O-W-S. Cows. What? And what it was, adjacent to our 10 acres that we bought, there was a cow pasture. <laughs> yeah. And there's this man had cows out there all fenced in. She thought those were our cows. Yeah. That, that uh, we were having, you know, I don't know, maybe to raise money on the side, you know, to uh, be, able, be able to take care of our bills. But anyway, we endure. And it could be that somebody's going to have an enforcement down the road. But if God will help us, we'll last. Amen. We'll last and we'll stick. Another thing a real church ought to do is a church ought to uh, edify, which means simply to build up Christians. A church ought to edify Christians. Uh, the Bible says, verse 7, there are examples to all them that believe. When Paul went around getting people saved all over the country, there's a place in the Bible where the Bible says, and after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. Acts 18.23. Paul went around on the disciples to try to build them up in the faith. Now, how's our church going to do that? How's our church going to take Christians and build them up? I believe one of the main ways that we do it is by fearless preaching. Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. And then he said, with all long suffering, anybody remember the last word? And doctrine. That is, fearless preaching, faithful teaching of sound doctrine. And I believe, I believe friendly encouragement as well. I do my best when you folks come up here to let you know that this church is so glad that you showed up at this service. I had I had somebody tell me about church in the area, and they're sound. They're sound in doctrine. They're sound in faith. They believe a great deal, like our church does. They're Baptist church. But I've had more than one person say that when you go there, don't expect them to greet you with friendliness. Yeah. Don't expect them to to get you to sign a card and call out your name. For the, don't you expect that? To, you're not going to be embarrassed there. Yeah. You're going to come and go and might not ever, nobody ever know you was there. Folks, I don't want that to happen. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. You ought to get something from the rest of us by coming to church. And what I mean is, is we all get built up together by friendly encouragement. I like it all. I love it. That's why that we have the fellowship time. And I know that we can offend somebody because there's some people that come to church that don't want their hands shut. That's right. There's some people that's pretty obvious they don't want their hands shut. Yeah. They ain't going to move. They may not take their hands out of their pocket. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to get a handshake from them, you're going to have to make special effort. That's right. Not only will you have to go to them, but you may have to pull their hand out of their pocket and say, hey, let me shake that hand. <laughs> Another thing that we ought to do is a church ought to engender converts. Verse 8 says, From, from you sounded out the word of the Lord. In Acts 2.47, the Bible says, Praising God and having faith with the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Folks, let's pray for converts. Amen. I believe that the Spirit of God can produce conviction Amen. if you and I will just get busy and pray and go. Amen. The Scriptures will produce a conception uh, where people are born again by the Word of God, 1 Peter 1.23 it says. So we've got to continue to give the Gospel, a Gospel seed from the Bible. The Son of God will bring conversion Amen. as a believing sinner comes to God by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Another thing that the church ought to do in verse 9 is ought to expose counterfeits. Yeah. It ought to expose counterfeits. The Bible says 
that these Thessalonians in verse 9, they turn to God from dead or from idols to serve the living and true God. Folks, we ought to let some people know that that false religion is not going to get them into heaven. And it's just idolatry. You don't know how it's idolatry? Yeah. Go to a church and go to one of these churches that comes like this. Oh, you been there? Feed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Feed five, four, five, eat pluribus That's right. Yeah. Amen. Looking up in them statues, idolatry is what it is. Right, and uh, a church ought to expose counterfeits. The church at Ephesus, the Lord said to them, He said, I know thy works, thy labor, thy patience. He said, And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. The church at Ephesus found out people who claimed to be apostles and found them to be liars by trying them out. But how can we, how can we expose counterfeits? Preaching the truth. Proving and testing the phonies. Proclaiming the names of the false prophets and teachers. That's why every now and then I just go ahead and give you the names of these people and of these movements. I may make fun of them and call them something like Jehovah's False Witnesses. But you know who I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Then one more thing in verse 10. A church ought to expect the coming of Christ. Amen. Another thing that we ought to do, we ought to expect the coming of Christ. The, the chapter closes Amen. how that they, they turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God in verse 10 and to wait for His Son. We, we got saved. We served God. And we keep looking for Jesus to come back. And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I'm not waiting on signs. I'm waiting on the Son of God. I'm waiting for His Son from heaven. I don't think there's anything that has to take place between now and then. Otherwise, I'd be waiting on that thing. If I thought the mark of the beast had to come first, I'd be waiting on that. I believe Jesus could come tonight. I believe Jesus could catch us. What is today? 21? Correct. Okay, here's my prediction for the date of the rapture. September 21, 2022. That's my, I've studied the Bible for 50 years. That's when I believe Jesus is coming. September 21. Say, what led you to believe that? Waiting for His Son to come back. I think the only way for you and me to be waiting for His Son to come back is to look for Him to come this day. Amen. And if He don't come this day, I'm going to change my prediction. I'm going to predict for Him to come home all day tomorrow. Amen. A real church ought to wait for the Savior, watch for the Savior while working for the Savior. Yep. Now, if you find a church like that, I suggest if you're saved, join it. Amen. Get in. Support it. Build it. No church is perfect, but it needs somebody just like you yeah. to participate and fill your part in what a real church ought to do. Amen. Let's stand together, hit bow. Amen. Every hit bow.